All right, welcome to B-Side Salt Lake City event. Appreciate you all getting here bright and early. I know more will start to trickle in, uh, so it's great. You know, I just want to start out by saying thank you to the sponsors. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about them as we go through the slide deck, but transparently, we wouldn't be able to have the event without them and their support. So I really appreciate all they've done over the years, especially some of these top tier sponsors that have uh, year over year uh, provided the financial means for us to continue this event. And I'll talk more about what the goal of the event is as we move through it and all that. But yeah, it's really not possible without funding. So yeah, so welcome to the event. You know, our slogan in everyone is a participant. Right? Hopefully that will become clear through this presentation, but you know, B-Sides is all about people coming together and having great conversations. You know, we really look at, there's not really attendees, that we're all participants in this, and you know, really encourage everyone to have lively conversations and really get the most value right? when you have this. Life is fleeting, right? Time is short. You only have a little bit of time here, so you, know, you might as well make the most of it and, uh, you know, try to build some good connections along the way. Uh, in that whole line of thought, uh, you can definitely create more connections and get more information about the event if you join the Discord. So the primary communication methods are, are over Discord, and there are community-specific channels. So for example, the CTF channel is pretty active. Um, so if you're looking for help, everybody in the community is pretty accessible from my uh, experiences. Um, so you can either jump into a channel, ask a question, or you know, find out who the lead is over a community or over a, a specific project and kind of DM them and get more involved. So, All right, uh, what is B-Sides? It's a community-driven framework for having cybersecurity events uh, that are really created by community members for community members. And what is the goal? It's really we want to expand that spectrum of conversations that we normally have in another space and time that's kind of outside of both, you know, kind of that third space concept outside of work and outside of uh, home, right? So uh, provides an opportunity for that. Uh, you know, I firmly believe B-Size is a great way for people to present. You know, I love to see first-time presenters get up here and present. I know. We have a ton of super smart people in our industry, uh, and they have a lot to share, but you know, we all kind of have our little quirks, and presenting isn't always the easiest thing for individuals, so super excited. We got a great lineup today, and um, yeah, we had a great day yesterday. Yesterday was really a workshop day focused on hands-on workshops. Today is really the main day kind of focused on the sessions and communities, and there's lots to do hands-on today as well in addition to the sessions. Um, what happens at B-Sides? Conversations happen. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to generate conversations that are going to help you get into InfoSec or excel in your InfoSec career. And, uh, and then if you're already kind of, you know, at a great place in life, then you're kind of giving back and helping others, right? So get to kind of where you've been in the industry. So I think we all can do a little column A and a little column B there, right? So. Um, so hopefully this event provides the platform for you to do that. Um, I'm a big believer in kind of that OODA loop type methodology where you observe, you orient, to, you orient based on the, what you observed, then you make a decision, you act, and then you loop back around and do it again. So, um, you know, anytime I do a project, whether it's cybersecurity related or otherwise, I'm always trying to loop through that as fast as possible. And, you know, I want to kind of provide you with a little bit of information now at the beginning so that you can get the most of your day today. So that's kind of my goal here. So there is basically t two buildings, right? So the building that you're currently in kind of has these two buildings joined together in the atrium area where registration is. And then there's another building over here, right, the MFEC. So some of the, some of the sessions and tracks are going to be here and some are going to be over there and I'll kind of walk through that. 
Uh, so registration is just out in the atrium. If at any time you're lost or you need help, just go to the reg desk and, and they'll be happy to point you in the right direction. So uh, we got an awesome reg team. Also, please stop by and talk to the sponsors. Really, events not possible without them. And um, I know that some of them specifically have some cool handouts or cool like activities to do. So I would definitely check that out. There is also a raffle contest. So if you didn't get a card, I think it ran out of cards already. But so if, they'll give you a, like a three by five index card. And if you go around and get all eight stamps by talking to each sponsor, then you'll be in the running for a drawing. I believe the prize is a Apple HomePod, the bigger one, right? So that's a pretty cool prize. So one person who goes around and gets all of them will win that. So. And I just want to take this time to say thank you to the sponsors. Uh, DigiCert has really helped us grow this conference over you know, the last seven, eight years. Appreciate them. Same with Adobe. Appreciate all they've done over the years. Um, so yeah, show them some love in the sponsor area. Uh, new, new for this year is the U of U's School of Business. They're sponsoring. Uh, definitely talk to them if you're interested in a cybersecurity master's program. We also have Data Theorem, which they create kind of like web application security products or help you secure your web applications. So if you are, have a need or you're interested in more about what they do, um, I would definitely stop by and talk to them. They seem like they have some really cool tech. Pramify has this like deadlifting contest out there in the vendor hallway. It's pretty cool. I've never done a deadlift before. Yesterday, I crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got one. I got one vote of confidence. Proofpoint. They're here in Utah. They got a good office, and uh, they they make a great email solution. So you know, if you have issues with spam or whatnot, definitely check out their solutions. Uh, if you haven't used Sysdig, um, you're probably doing Kubernetes wrong. Right, so uh, it's a pretty great, they make some great tools to really debug Linux environments, uh, specifically like, I've, I've used them in Kubernetes environments in the past, so, and they do have some free tools too, so um, even if you're not like in the commercial, I would definitely go check out some of their free tools. Uh, VetSec is another nonprofit, just FYI, the, uh, the organization that runs this event is a nonprofit, 501c3. If you're interested in more about that, just stick around after the, my closing talk at the end. We have kind of like a members meeting for the nonprofit um, if you want to ask more questions about that. But VetSec is also a nonprofit that's really helping veterans transition into cybersecurity roles. Um, those, you know, I've worked with a lot of veterans over my career, and they, they make a lot of sacrifices for us, right? So, you know, it, what, anything we can do to help them. Yeah, I think is, you know, they have more than deserve it. I also want to call out SUU. Um, they're heavily involved in kind of the women in tech lunch that I'll talk about and uh, program today, which I'll talk about. And, um, and you know, just appreciate their general support. Um, so it's another great place to check out if you're looking at for a degree in cybersecurity. Yeah, thank you again, sponsors. Okay, and while we're on the thank you train, I'm not going to be able to thank everyone, but there's a ton of people that have put a ton of hours into this event, including you know the ones that are visible, speakers, the people running the communities. But there's a lot of people just behind the background putting a lot of hours into this. So really want to thank them for all that they do. And, you know, I really want to call out like Bobby took over the website, so that was really helpful to get off my plate. So I appreciate that. And. Um, Trey and Chris have been doing a great job. Trey with Outreach and Chris was with Volunteers. If you're interested in being a volunteer next year, there is a call for volunteers. And if you see Chris in the hallway, say hi to him because he's kind of in charge of that domain. So um, yeah, so I really appreciate everybody and the work they put into it. Uh, we are a nonprofit. If you want more info about it, you can go to the utahcybersecurity.com website or you can stick around after I talk at the very end of today. Um, yeah, the main purpose of the nonprofit is just to put on these B-Sides events to help 
more people get into cybersecurity. So, uh, if you don't know me, I'm Tweak Fox on Twitter, Bryce Coons. I'm not like the most social, um, so I don't put out the most content. Uh, but you know, like back in the day, I, I kind of got you know into when I was living in Southern California and got into more of the hacking scene and all that. And you know, I had a lot of really good mentors that helped me kind of get to where I am today. Um, had a pretty fun career. Like worked at Homeland, kind of run their network defense on their unclassified side. Worked at uh, the intelligence community. Did uh, kind of ended up being a technical director there. Ran a lot of their. Um, offensive operations and things like that. Uh, built a red team for Adobe here in Lehigh. Uh, that's where I kind of relocated to the Utah area. And um, I built a company, Stage 2 Security, and that's kind of morphed into ultraviolet cyber now. Uh, and we just kind of focus on cybersecurity services, whether they're offensive or defensive and things like that. So, you know, I have certifications and other things. Uh, so, anyways, if you're ever looking for career advice, um, usually in a Hawaiian shirt and somewhere around here, happy to help. So, um, but there's a lot of other great people in our community too that can kind of guide you. So, but that's that's me in a nutshell. Okay, cool. Okay, you are in track one right now. Uh, this is KGMC 150. Uh, so if you see that referenced anywhere, this that's where you are at. So, this scale on the side is Bryce's scale of, of hardness, or Bryce's scale of pain. So it's uh, red means the hardest, green means super easy. These are my general approximation of the activities here. I could be totally wrong, so take it with a grain of salt. All right, so track one, you know, not, you know, not totally a beginner, but not, not really advanced. So, so, and that's kind of where we try to keep most activities for B-sides. And that's here in this building, the KGMC, that you're currently located in. Track two is in the other building, kind of has stadium seating. When you walk in, if you walk in through the 100 doors, it's to your left. Um, and it's room 101. And, you know, same, more sessions like here. So that's over in the other building. There is the circuit assembly workshop. Matt Lormer is running this. He's, uh, he's graciously, um, you know, volunteered his time to do this. He has a lot of soldering iron set up upstairs. Uh, so if you want to, there is a B-Sides mini badge that plugs into, like, the St. Con badge. Um, so uh, he's made some custom ones, and it's up there. So stop by. Now, if you don't really have any soldering experience, just check in with Matt when you get there, and he'll, he'll help you learn the basics. Um, so, you know, this is generally more accessible than I think most people realize. Um, you know, I really, I don't have the most stable hand, if you know me, right? I shake a lot, and even I can do this, so, so, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, I'll check it out. That's just upstairs, so in the back of this building and upstairs, that's where that's located. All right, we got the keep coming back from last year. Uh, we've had this at a couple B-Sides events, and it's been, the feedback's been phenomenal on it. So I really want to appreci thank 801 Labs uh, for all they do and putting on this event. Essentially, it's kind of like an interactive environment where you can learn to hack in kind of a safe environment. So, and the team that runs it is, is really, they're really easy to work with and really accessible. So if you want to get some hands-on hacking experience, this would be a good place to start. Um, as well as, I just want to do a shout out to 801 Labs. If you're not aware, there's a hacker space in downtown Salt Lake City uh, where they meet up, I believe, every Thursday evening and they, you know, talk about cybersecurity stuff and hacking stuff and different maker projects. So um, if you haven't ever checked that out, I definitely would go down there um, on a Thursday. So, okay. Um, Talked about that. That's in the building right behind us and upstairs. Uh, Bash Ninja, he's heavily involved in the 801 space. He's running a, a new uh, hands-on competition called Battleground Server Siege. It looks really cool. Uh, so I, I was, if you want to try your hand, some hands-on hacking, um, and you've already done the keep in one of the previous years, I would stop by and check this out. It does 
look like it's a little bit harder than maybe the keep is, but um, you know, Bash is a very accessible guy, and it, I'm sure it'll be very helpful. So, so it's just upstairs in this building. Okay, uh, we have the CTF back from last year. Kevin Lustig recruited more people to help with it, um, so they got a lot of fresh challenges. And um, that's going to be in the other building and upstairs and in 223. That is a new room. It was not like in the same room as last year. So, um, so yeah, make sure you go to the correct room. And uh, well, I know there's probably not like power and stuff set up over there, but I'll get that set up in the next hour or so for you. So uh, that's another building and upstairs. Okay, there are prizes for the CTF, right? So, um, namely, if you compete as an individual, I believe there's Apple AirPod Pros, Nintendo Switch Lite, and some AirTags. Now, if you compete as a team, the number one team will get some of these LoRa devices, these uh, low power, high range devices where you can like, text each other on them, which are pretty cool. Um, so, if you want any more details, hit them up in the Discord, go to the C CTF room. Uh, you don't have to be in the CTF room to compete, uh, uh, but you do need to be here at that closing if you want to pick up your prize. So. There's a Women in Tech event. So if you are interested in that, you know that is going to be over in the other building, in the top level, and in 203, kind of the corner. Um, so, uh, if you want any more information on that, check in at Reg. If you are, you know, if you feel like that's, uh, they usually do a great job. They bring in a bunch of speakers and they talk about key issues in the industries and things that they've used to overcome those challenges. And um, Kirsten, who's one of the lead organizers for the event, she's you know heavily involved in this as well as Bobby and um, and they. You know, in the past, they've done a spectacular job hosting this event. So uh, if you feel like that's something that you could benefit from, then I would definitely recommend you check it out. So that's another building and upstairs. OK, I also want to mention there's a resume review workshop. So if you are a college student or a high school student or just someone who's looking to switch careers, I know we're all looking to kind of upgrade our career at some point. Um, Brandon has run this workshop once before. He's done a spectacular job, and then he's done a bunch of upgrades for this year. So check out the schedule to see when it starts. But it's going to be in this building, upstairs, and in 229. There's like a little presentation he's going to walk you through at the beginning to kind of explain best practices, as well as there's going to be some other students, like at least one student, talking about their experiences with it. And then they're going to go around and help you upgrade your resume if you want. So um, definitely worth your time. Uh, if you check in by the Eventbrite system, you will be automatically entered into a raffle. We're going to draw five people's name at the closing ceremonies, and they will get an Apple gift card. So um, if you're interested in that, come to closing ceremonies. And make sure you're checked in with the Eventbrite system. And then there's a MVP prize just for someone we see here going above and beyond, um, which is going to be a Princess Peach Lego set. There's also a social media contest. Like, we don't really have, like, it's pretty much all a volunteer-run organization at this point and has been for years. So we really want to get more people into cybersecurity and get more of the word out. So if you can help us by putting images or tweet or content out there on social networks, uh, we're going to pick the best submission that we see in the next, you know, before close. And then we're going to award a Lego set to that person. So. Um, yeah, so please, you know, push out information on social media that is positive about the event to help attract more people, right? So, contest rules. You must be present to win. You have to be here basically at 4 p.m. today, track A, this room, uh, where we'll call names and give out the prizes. If you want any more information about any of the sessions, head over to the website. I do want to mention that when you click on the content link on the website, you'll get the drop-down menu. And if you click on the event schedule portal, 
that has a view that's more mobile friendly for your cell phones. And it will even like, you know, say like, hey, make a shortcut here. Um, so that sessionized URL will really help you have a better mobile experience. If you're on a laptop, um, I kind of like some of the other views a little better. Um, and then if you want to know how it matches up to the room layouts, just under content, check out the rooms and layouts link. And it will have the diagrams there. Just make sure you're looking at Friday's diagram um, as opposed to Thursday's. So, OK. Um, there's not a lot of like super awesome food options nearby here. Feel free to DoorDash or Postmates yourself something. Uh, I put some options here that I thought were good if you're looking for something after the event's over. I like Slackwater pizza is pretty awesome. And I like hamburgers. But uh, anyways, that's probably just some info if you're out of town. I will put these slides in the Discord channel in general right after this. Um, so if you want to reference it, you can there. All right, conclusion. Really, we're trying to help build connections here at the event, right? We want individuals to come together. We want you to communicate. We want you to build lasting connections, right? Um, so that's really it's going to have an impact on our community. It's going to help our community grow. Hopefully, you'll have a great time today. You'll tell your friends about it, and more people will come next year, and then we'll be able to help more people and help each other out even more. And one side effect of doing that is that when people start to connect on a person-to-person -person basis, um, you know, you really start to gain more empathy for the other person typically, and then you, you know, you care about their success, right? So you can help each other out in careers, move forward, grow, um, advance, and, you know, that's kind of a side effect of just us coming together and the community growing. I mean, if you really think about where the cybersecurity community was a decade ago versus today, and then think about, it's grown a lot, if you, yeah, spoiler alert. And then, you know, think about where it's going to be in 10 years from now, right, if we continue to build a open community that accepts all types of people, as well as, you know, friendly, right? There's a lot of, a lot of really smart people in the industry, right? And I feel like when we, you know, when you're online, sometimes people get a little dehumanized, right? You don't realize you're talking to another human and they have feelings. But when you're here in person and you're interacting face to face, it's a lot easier for us to kind of register all those factors. So that's one of the reasons that I still really like in-person events. So, OK, that's it. I'm now going to pass it over to JC. If you don't know JC, um, he's a total. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> I'm very grateful he came out to do the keynote, uh, but he's awesome. So um, yeah, so it's going to be a great keynote. Once JC's done, um, all the workshops and other tracks will open up. Um, so feel free to check out the schedule after that. Um, but yeah, JC's awesome, and he's he's local to Utah. I mean, he's somebody that we could all inspire to be more like. Um, and. Um, <laughs> I'll let him do his own intro, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm super grateful for JC coming out doing the keynote. I'm also super grateful for everybody who's put a lot of time and effort into the communities, into the sessions, into the workshops we had yesterday. Um, you know, really impressed with the turnout we had yesterday, and I'm sure it's going to be even better today. So, all right, thank you. Appreciate your time. I'm going to turn over to JC now. Appreciate you. <laughs>